Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers. Thank you for joining us for the second episode of Ang Artimo. Uh, once again, I am your host, Michael Di Peralta, and we are fortunate to have our second speaker for tonight or guest, Mr. Benji Aglim from Texas, United States of America. So um, I would like to thank uh, each and every one of you for subscribing and supporting our channel and supporting the respiratory therapy profession, especially in the Republic of the Philippines. So um, again, a uh, reminder to all our viewers, I know you guys have been supportive of our show and uh, I do apologize for the technical difficulties last week. And we would like to thank Mr. Uh, Dr. Noel Tiburcio for uh, being patient and having uh, taking the time to sp speak with us uh, last week. If you are hearing me loud and clear, please just comment on the chat box. And if any technical difficulties, please let me know right away so I can fix whatever it is causing the difficulty for tonight's show. Thank you so much. And also, I would like to congratulate our last week's winner, um, Ms. Rinaliza Bogsulen from Baguio City. Um, she won um, uh, our prize for last week as she answered when was the first PRC license was administered in the Philippines and where, which is uh, which was held at the Manuel L. Quezon University. So congratulations again, Ms. Rinaliza Bogsulen. And I would like to invite our audience, if you know any colleagues, family members, uh, future RTRPs, current respiratory therapists, respiratory therapy students, um, this is a great topic for us today as we will learn about uh, Mr. Benji Aglin's topic, uh, Advanced Airway Management. So um, tell them to join and um, watch us live through our YouTube channel, Ang Artimo. Again, uh, once again, that's on Ang Artimo YouTube channel, and we are currently live. If you do have any questions at any point, please comment on our chat box, and we will gladly answer your question um, towards the end of the show. But if there's any problem, we will uh, look into it uh, immediately so we can fix the problem. Again, thank you for joining us today um, for our uh, for today today's episode. And now, uh, without further ado, uh, we will uh, welcome uh, our guest for tonight. Uh, good evening there, Mr. Benji Eglim. Good evening, everyone. It's uh, 9 p.m. here in uh, Conroe, Texas. It's mm -hmm. Saturday. Yeah, thank you so much for um, taking time and um, giving your time uh, to share your knowledge and expertise and be, uh, uh, taking the time to be a guest of the Ang Artimo Show. Maraming salamat po. All right, so uh, now we will uh, start with a question and answer. I have it on the questions are currently at my hand right now. So um, tell us uh, who is Mr. Benji Aglim? Can you tell us where, what school did you go to, and where do you currently work? If you can share that to our audience tonight, sir. Yeah, I uh, I graduated my uh, I received my uh, Bachelor of Science in Respiratory Therapy from uh, Perpetual Binyan Laguna. It was uh, 1991, so it's quite a while. I'm the the third batch of the Bachelor of Science, and then uh, presently I'm working in um, in uh, HCA um, Houston Healthcare in Conroe, Texas. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, level two trauma. So I've been here for almost 18 years, and then uh, I have also some uh, uh, different um, experience worldwide, which is I um, worked seven years in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, 92 to 99, and then Singapore from uh, 1999 to 2003, in uh, National Neuroscience, National Neuroscience Institute and you know Tantok Singh Hospital, the SARS Hospital of Singapore. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. You you've uh, you've gone to the Middle East, to uh, mm -hmm. Singapore, and now to the United States. That's quite mm -hmm. a journey. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, for sure. You know, you have a lot of experience in the field. Um, next question, sir, would be. Um, Okay, you already mentioned that you graduated from the Philippines. You are a BSRT and currently hold, uh, correct, uh, RRT, neonatal pediatric specialist? Yeah, yeah. 
That's awesome. And then, um, Mr. Benji, if I may ask, um, did you take up any course before being a respiratory therapist? Were you a former nurse or a med tech before? Or was RT no. your first profession? No, I am a full-blooded respiratory therapist from the beginning. Yeah. Oh, nice. But remember, yeah, but remember during that time, uh, in, nine, in the early 90, uh, mm. 90s, we call this an allied health profession. Mm -hmm. So these are physical therapies, occupational therapies, um, respiratory and speech, speech therapy. So in your first two years, it's allied health. Now you go for the qualifying te exam where you, if you qualify for the PT, OT, RT, or speech therapy, or if you want to go on that course, you decide on your, on your third year. But, you know, from the PT point of view, initially, well, I like PT, physical therapy, but the high, to high quota course. And then I think it's, you know, I have a very high energy level, so I decided to go to speech instead of the OT or speech therapy. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning, I'm a, uh, really a full-blooded respiratory therapist, you know, finishing my uh, four-year degree in 1991. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, full-blooded respiratory therapist. That's mm -hmm. great. Yep. <laughs> um, next question is... Um, well, you already mentioned that you have worked in Riyadh, Singapore, mm -hmm. now the United States, and currently working at Houston. Um, why did you choose to become a respiratory therapist? I know you briefly mentioned that you're trying to go, you know, a different route, but mm -hmm. why respiratory therapist and how was it now? If you are to go back, like, did you regret it or you wish to be someone else or how was it? Yeah, that's a good question. But, you know, during that time, in the first two years of college life, so we, there's a career orientation. So we know who are the PT, what's the job of the occupational therapist, the artist, mm -hmm. and the speech, speech pathology or speech therapy. And then I noticed that, uh, you know, the PT is like, uh, you know, it's more on rehab and mm -hmm. they work only uh Monday to Friday, they don't have any shifting. And then uh, I, I like more an action type, right. you know, more more energy level, high energy level. And I saw the mm -hmm. RT, they work in ER, you know, uh, they perform CPR mm -hmm. and all this thing. And I remember during my rotation in Lung Center, I was doing CPR and then the, the PT, OT and speech therapy from uh, UP and USD, they are just watching and they saw... They were impressed that the RT participate in, you know, life-saving measure, which for them is a different field. So they just uh, more on rehab. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's really like respiratory therapist in action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In action, we, yeah. That's what I like. High energy. Mm -hmm. um, um, if uh, qu Next question would be, what is, what is the achievement that you consider that you're uh, – you're very proud of or you're most thankful for? Oh, uh, good question. Uh, for me, you know, from the beginning, mm. I still on the bedside for the past 29 years. Mm. You know, money is in everything, but for me, the best achievement is teaching. I mm. shared all this experience from Riyadh, Singapore, mm. and up to this time to the nursing and the respiratory department. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all this knowledge, I, again, I share to them. That's why I'm very involved in teaching. Right. From Saudi Arabia, Singapore, I was always involved mm -hmm. in teaching. I, I never leave the bedside, but I'm still there. But occasionally, they tap me. They, um, they encourage me, the nursing department in, uh, in Singapore, to participate in, in their critical care nursing mm -hmm. program. The same thing in, in Saudi Arabia. I was teaching uh, basic life support. At the same time, uh, an RT teaching. So... The love of teaching is the best achievement because, you know, like hundreds, I teach like almost hundreds of nurses, uh, RT, and then also here, uh, yeah, also related to the Boy Scout because I'm in a first aid too. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the more on the knowledge I share with them. It's the right. best. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, being a teacher or educator or being able to share your knowledge and expertise is a great achievement. It It's full. Filling, you know, it's fulfilling. Yes. And I agree mm -hmm. with you. That's a very good achievement. And yep. Um, next question would be, 
Um, what is your specialty? I know a lot of people do like working adults. Some are neo and pediatrics. What is yeah. your what is your specialty that you can consider that you love? Yeah, from the beginning, my uh, my specialization is adult critical care from mm -hmm. ER, a surgical ICU, medical ICU, CCU, neurotrauma, neuro trap, neuro shock trauma, mm -hmm. and uh, it's adult adult critical care. That's why I have a wide range exposure to, and mm -hmm. you know, especially our hospital is a level two trauma, and the same thing in Singapore is a. The National Neuroscience Institute, with all the head injury and trauma, were being admitted in Singapore. So, adult critical care is my specialty. Even though uh, my credential is neonatal pediatric, mm. I only uh, work in in Saudi Arabia in the pediatric, not so much in neonate, more in pediatric. Mm -hmm. But after that, uh, but um, I specialize mostly in adult. Yeah, mm -hmm. same here, same here. I, you know, I have worked neonatal ICU or neonates and pediatric ICU. But still, my passion and my lo love would be adult critical care. And, yes. you know, I would I could go every day in the ICU or ED and take care of this patient. You know, even if I say, even with my eyes closed, I can do all of it. But with yeah. neonatal peds, you know, my heart is yeah. too weak to see exactly. those small kids. Yeah. Too small, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so... I know that you have mentioned that you love adult critical care. What is your favorite unit in the hospital? Like oh, med uh, surge, ICU, ED? Yeah, basically all. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed when I was assigned in ER, you know, because we are a member of the trauma team. Mm -hmm. So every night different, they call you, you know, activate your uh, trauma, trauma, your trauma phone. Which is we RT are very active in here, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know we coordinate with the EMT what they are bringing us. You know, it's a head injury or a head-on collision. Uh, I like also trauma, neuro trauma, and neuro ICU. Mm -hmm. You know, shock. Uh, the, it's totally different because in the in the medical ICU is more so in the long term. It takes time, weaning, pneumonia, COPD. Right. You know, I, I like more challenging. Right. Challenging. You know. Yeah, uh, I, I. But basically, I, I like more. Basically, all I see you, you know. All I see you. Yeah. All I see you. My 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 lab of I see you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, being in the emergency department, it's kind of mm -hmm. like you save, you yeah. do a band aid solution, and let the I see you team take care of them and wean them yeah. off. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the adrenaline in a especially a trauma yeah, I see you. Hmm? That's very that's very fun. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Next question, sir, would be, what is your favorite mechanical ventilator? Oh, uh, from the beginning, uh, I was trained, uh, you know, I work with many, but I like the, the Serbo, the Serbo 900C, my foundation during that time. And then we have also the Draeger. Mm -hmm. I like this technology. It's very basic, you mm -hmm. know, straightforward from Sweden, German made, you know. Mm -hmm. Nothing complicated, and they uh, they keep on improving that um, that ventilator, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's yeah. Dragers and servo. Yeah, I like are, the Drager. Mm -hmm, yeah, those are the vents Sir. that I've started. You know, yeah. I wasn't mm -hmm. an RT for a long time, but I started with the Drager, so it's kind of like I consider <clears throat> cheating because you know mm -hmm. the newer vents they calculate everything for you, but Drager exactly, servos. Yeah. Are yeah. ventilators. So you com you have to co compute the minute ventilation yeah. to get the volume. <laughs> yeah. You know, now it's straightforward. It's <laughs> <laughs> you just you know plug in your numbers and you'll see the results with no calculation. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, next question, sir, would be: uh, I know you have worked w at many hospitals, many institutions from different mm -hmm. countries. You know, what is your where was your favorite workplace? You don't have to mention the hospital so nobody gets jealous, but where yeah. was it and why? In, uh, no, I will tell you that the truth, the best one is in uh, Singapore. Mm -hmm. And there's a main reason why that. And I even share in the critical care team here in, in Texas. Mm -hmm. The good thing in Singapore, especially in the, the hospital that I work, the the Tantok Seng Hospital and National Neuroscience Institute, mm -hmm. 
is they treat you very well. They they honor your decision making mm-hmm. and uh, your clinical judgment. They your expertise. They honor mm-hmm. that. Whether you can win the patient, whether you extubate, they believe in you because mm-hmm. you were there. And mm-hmm. then they, they you can give input to the pulmonologist, and they listen to you. Your suggestion, mm-hmm. everything, they listen to you. And unlike in other institutions, mm-hmm. which the pulmonologists and they are the big boss. No, but here, no, in Singapore, no. That's what I like it. It's uh, it's the the teamwork mm-hmm. and the, um, the grand rounds. In the grand rounds, we have multiple team. Each patient, when the art is being questioned, you give input, and they believe in you. If you say. We, we cannot extubate because of this. They listen to you. And they, they honor you, your professionalism and everything. In Singapore, is number one in my list for uh, in, in that part, you know. Right. That's, that's, that's a great place to be a respiratory therapist mm-hmm. where they um, respect, you know, your expertise and your knowledge in order to, t- yep. to take care of your patient. Because... Mm-hmm. At the, you know, most of the time in our 12 or 8 hour shifts, we are the ones who are bedside yeah, with the nurses. Exactly. And we know exactly what is mm-hmm. what is going on. And let's be honest, our physicians are too busy dealing with a lot of patients. And we are there exactly. with our patients, yes. more, you know, most of the time. So when, you know, we say that, hey, doc, do this because this is what I think, you know, this is what I think mm-hmm. is best for the patient. And if your doctor said, yeah, you know, they trust you. And I think, yes. you know, that's the best place to be a respiratory therapist, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Especially, especially, Michael, at nighttime, mm-hmm. the pulmonologist is at home. Right. All the specialists <laughs> at home. So only you mm-hmm. and the nursing and the supervisor are there. So you mm-hmm. have to call them before they respond. But, you know, time is the time is the crucial right. part here is to right. respond to your yeah, decision yeah. making. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember that I used to work one hospital. Um, this is close to where I live right now, where it's a small community hospital, less than 100 beds. So our pulmonary mm-hmm. critical care doctor are, is a tele doctor overnight. <laughs> so you have to grab mm-hmm. the, do- the do- you know, the robo doctor, roll it next to the mm-hmm. patient and say, hey, doctor, can we change the vent settings to this? Mm-hmm. What sucks is like, no, I don't want that. I'm like, I see, yeah. do you, mm-hmm. you want to come here and work? We're paying you anyway. I'm so, mm-hmm. You're just trying to be rude because you want immediate action and immediate intervention yeah. again. Time is of the essence. So, exactly. you know, yeah. we're all mm-hmm. getting paid. We're working for the patient. Let's do mm-hmm. it now. Give me the, you know, give me the authority or the free freedom to, you know, mm-hmm. save this patient. Because if not, exactly. then, yeah, yeah, it's too hard. Then, you know, yes. I don't work there anymore. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that's one of the things I'm well, like, I want to Especially in, my, in, in Singapore that I work, we are covering four ICU at mm-hmm. night. I'm covering four ICU, 20 to 30 bands. And mm-hmm. and then I hand, and I, I do the band adjustment, the mm-hmm. pulmonology at home. And then I do my ABG and, you know, mm-hmm. and the weaning parameter. I do all. Mm-hmm. And they believe in you. Nothing negative. No negative comment. Right. They Believe in you. I, I like yeah. it. You know, yeah. fresh. They say thank you in the morning. Yeah. With all your, you know, we don't call them for bench setting. I do my own bench setting. Right. And they love it. Yeah. That's good. Now, moving on to the next question is, what is your uh, mo? Uh, I would say, what is the most memorable art? You know, moment for you as a respiratory therapist that up to this day you would remember. It can be a negative or a positive uh, event, but what is the most memorable moment that you've had with your patient? Oh, good question. I have one. Mm-hmm. The most memorable mm-hmm. memorable one up to this time was uh, after graduating in college, I was an OJT in Biluna or the Armed Forces of the Philippines Medical okay. Center. It was back 1991. And then we had an admission. This uh, lady is a nursing student mm-hmm. uh, tried to commit suicide. But eventually, after commi- I, I think she tried twice, and we have to tube him and uh, end up in the ventilator and trach. Mm-hmm. So uh, in, that, in that case, so I approached her and then, you know, talked to her, you know, some motivation and encourage, and she listened to me. So in in a shortcut, after a few weeks, we were able to extubate her. And then in, uh, I think, a month, she visited me with a family member in our department. And the trach are already healed. 
And then she saying thank you to me. And she remember me, even though she's in the band and, you know, the family was uh, very appreciative. Mm -hmm. And thank you for the support that I, and I was so happy because, mm -hmm. you know, I saved someone's life and motivate to be able to excubate and, you know, and continue her life as a nursing student and yeah. hope and stop doing, you know, uh, suicide, you know. Right. That's a memory of up to this time. I still mm -hmm. can't forget that one, yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, the wonder of being a healthcare provider, but most yeah. of all as a respiratory therapist, you know. You save mm -hmm. someone else's life and, you know, yep. help them mm -hmm. continue to live. You know? Yes, exactly. Yes, sir. So next question is, um, I think this is, this is not on my list, but I would like to ask because oh, yeah. you, you mm -hmm. work at, you know, Texas and, you know, working in the United States as a healthcare professional. Um, I know potlucks do exist um, mm -hmm. prior COVID-19 oh, oh, yeah. or maybe uh -huh. secretly during COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But what is the most requested Filipino food they would like you to bring for a potluck? Okay, good question. That's, <laughs> I think everywhere... Every country that I work or any um, traveling nurses and RD that I talk, they always want our noodles or the pancet. Yeah. That's the best one. And mm -hmm. then the lumpia, the those lumpia. two. They are partner, lumpia yeah. and pancet. Every time there's um, always, mm -hmm. you know, prior to COVID, we celebrate birthday every month, mm -hmm. RD nurses in our ICU. And always pancet, they love the pancet, mm -hmm. the lumpia, and uh, that's highly requested. In their mind, everybody you talk to, uh, nurses and RT from different states, New York, California, either Hispanic, black or white, they remember that, the pancet and lumpia. And lumpia, yeah. <laughs> the, you know, the favorite Filipino item mm -hmm. everywhere yep. in the world. That's yeah. good. Uh, next question. Um, um, what is your message to our aspiring respiratory therapists or our uh, current respiratory therapy students? Oh, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Well, usually I, I'm very good in motivating uh, students, even though uh, I'm, I'm very far here. And I usually, when I was in Singapore, no, I was in Saudi, every, Saudi Arabia every year, I go home. And then same thing in Singapore. Every time I go home, I uh, become a motivational speaker to... Uh, uh, a student mm -hmm. in the University of Perpetual Manila in Laguna mm -hmm. with Dr. Obilio. And then my message, mm -hmm. you know, now is very competitive, whether in the RT profession and nursing. There's so many. In, 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 in our field, you, need, you know, you need to be the best. And then also you need to be um, well-educated skills, you know, what you do. Because uh, right now, if I'm the... The manager, if you apply, you're the magna cum laude or summa cum laude. Yeah, I know you are very bright. You are maybe uh, book smart, but what else can you do? You know, I check other stuff. You know, what's what are you are uh, active in, uh, in 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 lecture or BLS or other extra that you do outside respiratory or your teaching? You have some extra stuff that you know. Are you a volunteer too, or your your spare time you do this, you do that? That's what I, I, I want to encourage everyone to be more active. Be more active. You don't just uh, go outside the box, you know, like um, what I did in 1991. I hold, uh, I think I hold five jobs. Imagine that after graduating in college, I was employed in as an OJT in B. Luna, mm -hmm. but I was teaching too as a clinical instructor in Emilio Aguinaldo College, Perpetual Binyan Laguna. I was uh, selling medical equipment. And then I was uh, doing pulmonary function tests in uh, in uh, uh, Proctor and Gamble, Philippines. And I have a private patient in Lung Center of the Philippines. Imagine mm -hmm. that. And I was uh, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot. And then uh, you keep upgrading yourself. You take the BLS, ACLS, anything that you will use in your career, get it. You know, trauma. You attend a lot of seminars. All this stuff that within your field, you know, if you want more than that, go ahead, you know, seminar, symposium, mm -hmm. um, um, anything related to your field or, you know, and go outside the box too if you want. Mm -hmm. So it's comp comp right now it's competition, competition. Right. It's not only the brightest 
you know, that's what not only the managers checking the brightest, no, not anymore. It's mm -hmm. what what you do to extra outside your field and what else can you offer? Right. Mm -hmm. True. Thank you. Thank you for that. And then now our last question is, what is your message to our fellow and current respir respiratory therapist or in, uh, most especially our uh, RTRPs, you know, our respiratory mm -hmm. therapists in the Philippines? <clears throat> What is your message to them? Uh, some words of encour encouragement or, you know, where do you, you know, where do you want the profession to be, you know, heading from now on? Yes, that's very important because from that, from that year that I left uh, Philippines, mm -hmm. it was 1992. So I was employed in Singapore at a young age of 20, 21 years old. So I think I'm the youngest one who left and then the first one employed as a BSRT in the Middle East. Now, remember for the new grads and prep, you know, uh, RT, it's totally different now. It's not only inhalation therapy or what you do. No, uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's totally different. We have more responsibility, and I hope what to see in 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 our profession in the Philippines is to be, becoming more competitive. Not only they see you as a neb jockey, as a nebulizer guy. No, no. If you come to Singapore and Texas. It's not like that. We are more above like that. And where we intubate, I do airline insertion. Was in Singapore, I decannulate patient. I'll, da I'll downsize straight. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not nebulizer only. No, no, no. So don't be discouraged. But I want you to to uh, be productive and active, and then try to show them who you really are. Knowledge is power. Remember, we want to show your the critical care team. And, you know, the member of the, the cold blue team, who you are and what's your capability. And the same thing, I hope in the future, some of the, the officer and member of the different organization to uplift mm -hmm. our profession, you know. Imagine it's been how many years since I left. It's almost 29 years now. There's some improvement, but I think we can do more, especially for the younger generation of mm -hmm. respiratory therapy, especially we're getting older. That's why I'm very active in sharing Sooner or later, you're going to be here in the front line, you know, the next generation. Yeah. Thank thank you for that, Mr. Benji. And I, and I know, and I just would like to add on to your, you know, last statement there. You know, um, I, you know, I, I never graduated, uh, you know, in the Philippines. I've never worked there. But, mm -hmm. you know, I have, you know, from, you know, from different people and from observation that I can mm -hmm. see different organizations could you know have different opinions but then again mm -hmm. as you mentioned this is not you know for um you know let's let i think the word is you know let's just unite and advance our profession for our future right mm -hmm. and whatever yep. it, exactly. yeah yeah whatever it was happened in the past you know mm -hmm. we we don't yeah. forget we learn from it but we do advance as you yeah. know as filipino respiratory therapists because again mm -hmm. we are representing the profession also in an international stage and we would like mm -hmm. our profession to be united a small number regardless of your affiliation right mm -hmm. regardless of your angst mm -hmm. you know to whoever it was let's unite mm -hmm. because again our future deserves more and they're the ones who's gonna bring this profession further forward right yeah. exactly all right, so thank you for that. Uh, our Q and A. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you for answering all our questions, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Benji. Let's pause for a short break, and uh, we will proceed with your uh, presentation, uh, mm -hmm. advanced airway management. So, to our live audience, if you have any question, um, shout out quickly, uh, Miss. Uh, sorry, am I? I might mispronounce your name. She or Shay Francisco. Uh, from Batanga City Healthcare, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, Pulmonary Department. Thank you for joining and uh, thank you for your support. So we will now proceed with the advanced airway management after a short break. So hang in, hang with us, uh, um, our uh, fellow artists, and we'll be right back. Okay. Mr. Benji, you can start yeah. sharing your screen. Oh, start now? Oh, no, okay. not yet, but you can uh, start sharing your screen while we're on break. Well, let me see. Yeah. 